Okay, who's with me today? Who? Scientist <laughs> Joe! Okay. Hello, partner. Hello, Scientist Joe. How are you doing today? Good. Excellent. All right. Now, today what we're doing is diffusion and osmosis lab. It's actually two labs in one. In one, the first portion, what we're going to do is, as you can probably see on here, there's a beaker, and the beaker has a tube with some liquid in it. The tube that we're going to use and stuff, the liquid we're going to use is, this is called dialysis tubing. And so it's a semi-permeable membrane. It allows uh, water to go through, but not glucose to go through. And in fact, Joe, what do you have there? Sugar water. Yeah, we got sugar water. So we've I got- I wanna drink it, it yeah. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So we have sucrose inside of here. And so the bag is impermeable to the sucrose, but water can pass through it, okay? So notice we have five solutions here. We have a red, an orange, a blue, a yellow, a green. Plus, we have another one, which is just regular distilled water, okay? Yeah, regular boring that's, water. That's the that's distilled water. So what color are we missing? We're missing blue. blue. We're missing blue. So what we need is we're going to need to put 25 mils of this in. So can you pour that in? Mm -hmm. Okay. And here we go. Okay, keep going, keep going, keep going. Perfect, thank you. Okay, so, and it doesn't matter if we have a little bit extra, that is quite all right. I'm just gonna put a little bit. By the way, never pour stuff back into the reagent bottle. Anyway. Then why are you doing it? Because I am a mystery man. You are a mystery man. I know. So, what we're gonna do just to show you the whole process is that we take this dialysis tubing and it's been soaked in water because if you don't, it makes it really tough to get these guys to open up. Okay, so I open that up. I'm gonna put my little funnel inside and a little trick of the trade that's done, aha, a little trick of the trade that's done is we blow into it. That goes and opens up the tube. Can I pour it in? You can definitely pour it in. Go for it. Okay. There we go. Boink. Perfect. Okay. And then set it down. And I'm going to tie off this end. Now, when I tie it off, I'm going to have water, which potentially can be going into or out of the water, depending upon what the solution is inside the dialysis tubing as compared to what's outside the dialysis tubing. Now, with this, because water is gonna be, and a lot of times entering, you wanna have a lot of slack on here, okay? Sometimes these people fill them up and they're like tight sausages. Well, in that case, you have too much pressure inside so the water won't be allowed to come in. So, we're gonna go and mass these. And so we've got a scale, we mass them. And then we're gonna place them each into these for a half an hour to see what happens to its mass. Half an hour. Don't worry, we got it worked out. Okay, take them, put them in, Scientist Joe. Boop. We're gonna have to wait a long time because I'm not gonna be able to pick up Sirsha. Well, you don't have to necessarily pick up your sister. We'll just let her stay on the streets. You. <laughs> okay. All right. So what's gonna happen with this is the following. We're gonna take these solutions, mass them before, mass them afterwards, and then we can figure out how much water entered over that half an hour. What does mass mean? Great question. Mass is how much stuff it's made out of. And so we put it onto a scale and that will tell us the mass in what's called grams. So that's it for the first part. Just like we had in the other lab, we have six solutions. One of them, by the way, is gonna be zero molar, so distilled water. One's gonna be 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. And we have these different colors here. Now they're not necessarily in the right order, but we're gonna to try to figure out what that order is, not only by doing the dialysis tubing that we did before, but by doing this guy. And what is this guy? Joe, what are we gonna be putting inside these little containers? Potatoes. We have potatoes. We have russet potato and sweet potato. What we're gonna do, sweet potato. And how, what did you do to get a core? I put 
this through. So put this guy here, which is the big guy. And why don't you show how you get a potato core? So you go in there. Beautiful. So then that guy goes through. We take this guy out. Whoop. And then how do you get the core out? Boom. And there comes the little core. Boom. Or what we like to call a potato poop. Okay, now. <laughs> yeah, I said poop. All right, now. Over here. Try putting it through the sweet potato. And tell me if it takes more or less work to put it through. Okay. So is that easier or harder? Way harder. Way harder, yeah. The sweet potato takes a lot more. Now think about that relative to the amount of solute that could be in a sweet potato. Solute? Yeah, it's the stuff that's dissolved inside there. So which one do you think probably has more sugar in it? A sweet potato or a regular potato? Sweet potato? It's almost like it's in the name. Because it is. And we're going to figure it out. So then we've got these solutions. And we're going to take four cores, one, two, three, four, that are basically the same size. We mass them before. They're going to stay overnight. And then mass them again to see how they changed. Okay? So take four, put them in. Go ahead. You start putting fours in, and I'll start putting fours in. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Actually, you want to put it into the, the this top one? Not a problem. So we're going to put all of these russet potatoes into these guys, and then we'll put the sweet potatoes into those guys. Beautiful. Good. Are they going to change color? That's a good question. You know, they, they don't really change too much color. There's not enough food uh, uh, coloring in there to make them actually change much. Okay, so I'm going to put four in So it's basically just sugar, water, or dye. That's bleach. all it is. It's just sugar, water, or dye. And bleach. And a little bit, there is a little bit of bleach so we don't get any bacteria or fungus growing. Okay. Now, Joe, let's take a look at something that's really quite fascinating. I'm Scientist Joe. You, you are Scientist Joe. I better tell, say the name properly. Okay. One, two, three, four. All right. Now, if we take a look at these, and let's go with the sweet potato first... We're going to notice that they basically whoop, are all floating except for the one which has the water. Okay? So hold on just for a second, Joe. Let's take a look at these. Do you think that we can really uh, tell the difference? My dear? Can we tell the difference between these? They're all floating. So that makes it pretty tough to figure out which is which. Let's take a look at the other ones, though. And we'll figure that out with the sweet potato, why it's that way They're later. They're sinking, Aha! Uh -huh. Well, that one has completely sunken. That one has completely sunk. That one has not sunk at all. This one is kind of sunk, but not kind of sunk. Okay, well, let's take a look. Then I'm going to put this guy at one end, right, because he's all sunk. And we know that's pure water. And we're going to put that guy next to it there. Where do you think the next one should go? Do you think it should be the orange one or the yellow one? Which one do you, which one do you, well, let me put it this way. Which one do you think we should put at the far end? If these are all sunk, which one should go at the far, far end on the other side? These ones. Okay, and we'll put the blue and then we'll put the green because you notice there's a green one actually on the bottom still. And we put the green, then what are you gonna put next? Yellow and then, oh, whoa. Hey, that is the correct order. There's clear, red, orange, yellow, green, blue. And you could tell by what it flows. Yeah. Because the more of the solute that you have, it's going to affect if it sinks or if it floats. Well, what makes, well, what's in it that makes it flow and what's in it that makes it sink? There you go. And so what we find out is it's the amount of sugars yeah. which are inside of here. Basically, the starch, which is inside of there. Starch? What's starch? Starch is just a complex sugar. It's called a polysaccharide because it's a whole bunch of sugars together. That's a big word. It is. And that's the sort of stuff that we eat from potatoes or bread or things like that. Yeah, now, bread. Mm -hmm. here's the other thing to look at, to think about, right? So we're going to take a look at this potato, right? And we're going to sit there and say, hmm, where do you think... The averages for these. Where would where would we go and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to break it there. What does that mean? Well, this guy's completely floated. Mm -hmm. 
then that guy, and then this guy, right? Mm -hmm. And then this guy here. So there's something going on between these two. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. So the molarity, don't worry about that, it's just the concentration of sugar in there should be between 0.4 and 0.6. That's the stuff we're gonna do. So we're gonna seal these, and we got tops to seal them, and then we're gonna check their mass the next day, and then from that, we will be able to figure out what the molarity is of the potatoes. But we have a time limit, limit here. We can't do it tomorrow. We have to do it today. But we have the magic of time because we're filming. Get over that. So, Scientist Joe, thank you. Mm -hmm. Until the next time.